So would that be a fair summary of what you're saying that I think Edward Snowden said it that privacy doesn't matter until it does. That's that's your point, right? And um, yeah. And I I I agree. I, I agree. I I think that's that's true. Um, <clears throat> let me see what what can I say about the uh, how about uh, have you heard about the privacy paradox? It's a the privacy paradox is a well known phenomenon. It's many research paper has been written about it. It's about people say they care about their privacy, yet they act like they don't. And that's the privacy paradox. Like they, people are observed that they don't care about their privacy. They click agree, 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 agree. Uh, but when you ask them, they're going to say that, oh, no, I, 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 I value my privacy very highly. And, 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 and so keep that in mind. But that's not what's happening. So what, what is happening? Uh, there was a meta-analysis lately that you know, the highest level of evidence is that people, that this all comes down to poor risk management, sorry, poor cost benefit analysis and risk assessment. So, so what does that mean? It means that People say they care about their privacy, that they're not gonna use privacy tools anyway. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's a problem. I, I, I guess you're completely right about that. In fact, that's my argument against privacy coins, not, not against privacy coins. I don't have anything against privacy coins. It's just why I want to work on Bitcoin's privacy and not an altcoin, a privacy altcoin. Uh, I want to work on Bitcoin's privacy because I think people don't care about their privacy that much. So Bitcoin is going to be the largest currency of the world because privacy, fungibility is the only thing that Bitcoin doesn't have and people don't seem to care about that. So let's make Bitcoin private instead of, instead of working on a privacy coin because it doesn't seem to gain adoption just based on the merits of its privacy. Um, so, so your, I, I guess the strategies or strategies that let's make our software as good as any other Bitcoin wallet software, but our software will have privacy in it. And will that be enough to, to get the people use it. Um, I I hope so. I hope if people have a choice between no privacy and privacy, then they're gonna use the privacy. I wanted to ask you: Can you kind of break down what why there's a rivalry between Wasabi and Samurai Wallet? Like, I isn't it kind of counterproductive? Like, shouldn't you guys be kind of working together rather than? Um, having disagreements? Mm, no, I, I, I believe Samurai Wallet is, is, is a scam and the people who are running it are fraudsters. So, so, so no, I, I don't like to associate myself with fraudsters. Gotcha. I suppose what you're saying before about, um, about people hopefully using uh, Wasabi Wallet because obviously they will see that it's, this, it's a, as good experience, if not better than other um, wallets, but with the added privacy built in to it. Um, I suppose that kind of comes to the, the first problem or the first thing with privacy is like, hey, it's all well and good making, you know, uh, session and signal and all these applications for encrypted communication. And it's all well and good having Tor browser. And it's all well and good having a Wasabi wallet. And it's all well and good using Bitcoin on Wasabi wallet or using Monero if you want to go and do that. But at the end of the day, if you do the, the first problem and the first thing to solve is actually education or people doing what they're doing. So you could go on Tor browser, for example, and then you can full screen it and open up a giant YouTube video and you've probably screwed yourself already with how actually useful Tor is to you. And you can go and, you know, 
use wasabi wallet but then you can go and say to people hey i just sent 50 bucks to my buddy and we're like doing money laundering or something you know what i mean like you, people were pretty stupid in this day in this day and age you know myself included um so when it comes to privacy i suppose the first problem is probably people like people need to relearn what they're doing online and relearn what they share and, and relearn how they do things and educate themselves and be educated and then i suppose the next step is then okay well these tools are here now I know how to use them properly. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to get at, I suppose, is like the, the, the first problem is human beings. Right? We're, we need to be trained to be private before we can then go and you know, use privacy-focused software. I just want to add something that it might not be true, but my observation is that older, the more older someone, the less likely is going to join to the new social media platform, right? It's not my observation, that's, that's an obvious fact. And I think what, <clears throat> what's happening here is that the more or older you are, the more you know your boundaries, the more you want to enforce that boundaries to the outside world. And one of the boundaries is that you don't enter into a new agreement with a new social media application. Uh, you're not trading your privacy against someone else. Uh, you're not trading your privacy uh, for a, another service because let's say Facebook is good enough for you. You don't, you don't need Instagram to, you, you might do, but you wouldn't trade your privacy for instance. That's the same company, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they didn't used to be though, right? When they came out. So the point you're making is still there. <laughs> yeah. So, so the older you are, the more, the, the less education you need, because the more conscious decisions you're going to, to make. So what to do with 16 years old people who just want to explore all kinds of stuff on the internet? Uh, you see, they don't have time. They, they are very, they are very keen on learning all kinds of new things because they're gonna just be left behind, right? Like that's your most, when you're 16, when you're, the younger you are, the more you learn. So you can't just mess around reading privacy policies all day, right? Like uh, that's, that's not working out where to, that's a hard question. Um, but what to do with people? You can't really educate them, right? That's you have to you have to build the software that doesn't need to be you don't need to be educated anymore about that software because it doesn't violate any of your basic human rights that that would be that would be a nice nice way to go instead of uh, putting more and more information into people's people's head i suppose i think i think you're right i think um I guess I just my concern is it's like you know what's uh, even with Wasabi Wallet even with say you've got like a decentralized secure social media or, you know that's perfect basically and doesn't give anything away you know what's to stop me saying you know going onto this decentralized social media saying hey my name is blah blah I have a million bitcoin and uh, it's in a hardware wallet and I have the seed phrase on me and I'm in this place here, here's a picture of me smiling with all my friends at this party and someone coming along wrench attacking me and forcing me to give them the seed phrase. Like, I suppose it's like that, that people do that kind of thing uh, all the time, it seemingly. Um, and some people get killed doing this kind of thing, you know, um, rightly or wrongly, obviously it's wrong. But um, I suppose that's that's my, my concern is like, some people will never change. Some people are always going to have some sort of issue with privacy anyway. Um, but for those that are younger, I guess the, the important thing for me is like the education aspect. Like there should be some form of education, whether it's in school or whether it's just online that's easily accessible and kind of known for everyone to go to, whether it's provided by Google or whatever, um, that teaches people about how to remain private online. So I, I think there's like, there's a lot, there's very much like, you know, my own generation uh, in, in my late 20s grew up and you didn't really know kind of, you didn't really get the importance of the like internet and what you were doing. You know, it was like back in the early 2000s, it was kind of like a playground and you just kind of experimented. And I'm sure people still think of it that way now, but you didn't really 
get that like, hey, if I write this status on my Facebook in 2007 or whatever, it's, it could impact me in 2021 when I'm an entirely different human being. Um, so I suppose that's just my, my concern is like making it clear to people that yeah, the internet is a real world. It's part of the real world and that it has clear ramifications. And I suppose you need to learn to be privacy focused as well as using privacy focused software that is easy to use and is usable by you and for you. But yeah, I think what you're doing with Wasabi Wallet is a pretty awesome thing. How close are you to releasing Wasabi 2.0? Is this like still a ways out or, or is it coming up pretty soon? Mm, it should be coming up this year for sure. Um, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> nice. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll definitely um, download it whenever the next uh, this 2.0 update comes out and give it a shot. And uh, yeah, probably switch slowly over to using it for some fun. But um, yeah, I appreciate, uh, yeah, appreciate your time and for you coming on. It's been awesome to chat to you and kind of get some perspective and, and some views on like the privacy side of things and Bitcoin and, and Lightning as well and kind of the improvements that can be made. Um, and yeah, please, uh, you know, keep everyone posted on, on the Wasabi Wallet uh, socials about when 2.0 is coming out. I'm sure you will let everyone know, but um, I'll be interested to, to download it and uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks for your time, man. It's been it's been awesome, and uh, thank you to those of, those who are listening in as well. Um, but yeah, appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Um, it it was a pleasure. I I thought we are gonna talk more about you are going to talk more about recent happenings, and then I will be uh, knowledgeable of what's going on in the Bitcoin world lately. But uh, we're gonna have to. Yeah, sorry. Well, I was like, we, we literally for this, uh, we literally from last week week to this week, we've changed like the running because at the end of the day, like we're more interested in hearing about yourself and like what you're up to. Um, and then when it comes to the current stuff, you know, a lot of it at the moment is just you know Musk and, and like and Taproot, which we did ask you know, we spoke about anyway. It's, it's been awesome anyway. I appreciate talking to you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Okay.